Good morning. Our second scripture reading comes from Haggai, chapter 1, verse 15b through chapter 2 to verse 9. Haggai, chapter 1, 15b through chapter 2 to verse 9. Listen for the word of God. In the sixth month, in the second year of King Darius, in the seventh month of the 21st day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Sheatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord, take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I have made you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. I thank you very much for the opportunity, sir, to be here with you all this morning. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Welcome back, and congratulations. Thank you for that beautiful anthem that you all just sang. Thank you very much. And I thank you all for having the opportunity to stand here today to bring a word of God. The sermon title is God first in our lives. Do we make room for God? Is God first in our lives? Do we make room for God? Will you pray with me, please? Dear Father God, we hope that this morning we will open our ears and our hearts to hear a word from you that hopefully, Lord God, as we draw closer to you, that we also commit ourselves to the work that you've called each of us to do. Let us be different, Lord God, when we leave here than we were when we arrived. In your holy name we pray, amen. You know, I was looking back at our call to worship this morning. I don't know if you have paid attention to the call to worship but in itself, it says, call to worship. And it's, it's a moment that everything that we're dealing with outside these walls just need to drop by the wayside. Because now we've been called into a place to worship God. All of our problems and situations and cares of the world, leave it out there. 
because now we have this opportunity to worship a God. And I just wondered if, if we really pay attention to the words, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Do we really feel that inside of us? Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Do we do that every day? That's why my title is, Is God First in Our Lives? Do we make room for God? In the story of Haggai, we find that the Israelites who have returned from exile, they're more consumed with seeking comfort for themselves while enduring economic hardship imposed by the government. That they are more concerned about their physical needs to the point that they have ignored building God's house, the temple. But yet, as they were returning, they were saying, we're going back to build God's house up. We're going, that, like that was their focus. Like God was their priority. However, Haggai brings this message to both reprimand and promise, giving the people concrete instruction on how to rebuild and to consecrate the temple so that the spiritual community might be reformed. It was supposed to be all about building God's house. But despite their return to Jerusalem, God's people cannot be fully restored from exile until they have reestablished the Lord's house as their center. You know, I was sharing earlier that you have this beautiful building, and it is a blessing. This is the type of worship service that I grew up with. We call high church. High steeple church, the accolades. What I miss seeing was we had the crucifer who carried the Bible and the word of God as well. And so this is very familiar. And your sanctuary is beautiful. And I've been told you had some renovations. And the ceiling's done. So you are taking care of God's Ephesus. And that's great. And the chapel that I was in this morning, beautiful worship space. You're doing a good job. Good job. So I'm not taking that away from you. But what I'm trying to also say is that how do we put God first in our lives when it comes to this house, this temple? Do we make room for God? Or do we let, as Rev said earlier, other things clutter our minds, clutter our to-do list? prioritize those things instead of putting God first. I think Haggai has a message for us today. This message was 520 BC. That's 520 before Christ. The second year of King Darius. And we understand that the people were under the control of a Persian government, a foreign government, but Haggai tells the people, you had the opportunity. You had the resources to take care of God's house, but you did not. God's house remains in ruin. My sisters and brothers, there are things that we have resources and opportunities to take care of the things of God outside of this building, outside of the chapel, there are people that God is calling us to serve. All of this, all the work that we would do for God, all of your outreach work, your evangelizing, whatever that may be, it's also about building God's house, building your commitment to him within your own house, making room for him. Rev said it earlier, we're so cluttered. You, do you have a room in your house that's just cluttered with junk? Is it the basement? 
Some people have a garage, but they can't even get the car in there because they have stored everything else in there. And what do we say? One day, I'm going to clean out this room. I'm going to get rid of this junk because I'm going to make room for something else. Same thing God is asking us to do. Clear away some of that junk. Get rid of that clutter in your hearts. Get rid of those things that you have made first. These people in this story, they had forgotten all about building God's house. What did they focus on? Themselves. They focused on the comfort for themselves. Not the comfort of other people, but for themselves. Scripture even tells and commentaries say that they paneled their homes had food and drink, things that they needed, clothing, wages for themselves, all consumed with those items, but forgot about building God's house, God's temple, the place where people will be able to come into and worship, worship God, putting God first in their lives. And with that happening, they were never content. We're never content. We'll store those things in the garage. And you know what we'll do? We'll go build another room and store more stuff in that room because we are not content. We just have to have more and more. And it's nothing wrong if you have these things. I'm not taking anything away from us. But what I'm saying, if those things are more important than being committed to God, than serving God, is something wrong somewhere. And if we realize we never have peace, we're never content, the more we buy, the more rooms we build on to the, the rest of the house, but yet we're never satisfied, there's a reason. You may not want to believe it, but it means that he is not first in our lives. We do not prioritize that list of things to do where he's at the top. You know, when I was tithing back at my home church, I would we have our uh, stewardship campaign. And we come out to the assembly hall and you went to the table that, uh, like, I'm a cooper, so I would go to the table for A through C's, and I sit there and I talk with the woman on the stewardship committee, and I make my pledge. And I would say 10% of my annual um, pay. But through the year, through the months, I would scale it back 5%, 2%, 3%. By October, though, I'm trying to catch up and pay till I get to that 10%, because I made this pledge to God. But it was always, I fell short. I would fall short. So I don't know what happened. It just kept urging me. The Holy Spirit just kept after me. Do this 10%. Do this 10%. And tell you the truth, I was actually doing probably 10% of my net. But we're talking, it should be 10% of my gross. So I finally find my way to my pastor's office, and after all this nudging, and I just, it just wouldn't settle in my spirit, and I came to Doc Jones, and I sit down at the front of his desk, and I said, Doc, something is telling me to tie 10%. And he leans back in his chair, and he says, try it. Now, that was not the answer I was looking for. Okay, I'm a single parent. I thought he would say, no, you can't afford to do that. That's going to be too much. He sits back and says, try it. And I tried it. But what it meant was I had to put God first at the top of the bill list, at the top of all the expenses that I had. God's 10% had to come off the top and had to come off as the gross. So it meant I had to keep my checkbook balanced. 
it meant I had to come up with a schedule, bills that had to be paid the 15th of the month, had to be paid on the 1st, bills that had to be paid by the 30th of the month, had to be paid on the 15th of the month. I really was very disciplined. In fact, if you try it, you'll find that you have to be very disciplined to do it. But it also decluttered a lot of stuff that I did not need in my life. Is God first in our lives? Do we make room for him? When we build on that other extension to the house, is it a prayer room? Is it a place where we go and we say, you know, we're going to meditate on him all day today? Usually it's not, unfortunately. And then we'll find, though, that we are not content, and our labors are unfruitful. My sisters and brothers, our bodies are a temple, and God is watching how we take care of our bodies, how we take care of these houses, and what's most important in these houses. I said earlier, we take care of the outside, don't we, ladies? We'll go get our hair done. We'll get a manicure. We'll get a pedicure. We'll get all these things. The men go get your shoes shined, get your hair cut at the barber. We look good on the outside. But where's our heart? Where's our priorities? Where do we serve God? How do we continue to build up his house? And I was looking through the dictionary. You know, the house is a noun, a place where someone might live. A house is an adjective, a place where we store something. We might call it being housed there. Or a verb where someone accommodates you. And I thank, I thank the Tigners for their accommodation these next couple of days. But a house has a variety of meanings. And so that's what I meant by we have a house here, this temple. But if we don't do the things that God has called us to do to continue to build up his house, we hurt the spirituality of our community. You hear the Sadducees, they came to Jesus and got to talking about resurrection. A group of people who didn't even believe in resurrection. But here they come to taunt Jesus. It's a form of rejection. In what ways do we reject the things that God has called us to do? How do we turn away from, oh no, I'm too busy. Oh, I got to play golf on Saturday mornings. I don't have time to work with the youth. Or whatever that might be. Is God first in our lives? Do we make room for God? We need to think about that. We need to think about how content we are in our lives. Are we being fruitful? And if we're not... Maybe we need to do inventory. Maybe we need to check off what things we have made first. And then maybe we need to go and scratch them out. Get rid of those things and start replacing them with God, with Christ, with being the voice, the ears, the eyes that he would have us to be amongst his people. We were just in a restaurant a few minutes ago where I speak about commitment. So we were over at the Committed Pig. So there's a saying on the wall. Go by there if it's no more than just to look at the saying on the wall. And I took a picture of this because uh, Doc Beverly said, ooh, you might can add that to your sermon because it's all about commitment, the commitment we have to God really reflects on how important he is in our life or where he comes. Is he on the bottom of the list 
or is he on the top of your list? Is God first in our lives? Do we make room for God? So this is what the saying says. The best way to describe the difference between involvement and commitment is bacon and eggs. I'm like, what? The chicken is involved, but the pig is committed. Which one are you? So I read it, and I thought, and so the, the waiter said, um, so do you get it? I said, ah, the chicken lays the egg, but the pig gives up his life. Huh? Do we give up our lives to Christ? Amen? Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, thank you for your time.